So I think it's appropriate to honor Marvin just for a moment in this audience because so many people here he touched. I know how many of you were inspired by him, how many of you loved him, um, how many of you he challenged or irritated or um, made laugh. And he had a way of engaging with people, whether you were a child or a Nobel Prize winner, of kind of pointing out the foolishness of your ideas without making you feel like a fool and really kind of pushing you to think about the world in a new way. And Marvin did think about the world in such a special, different, amazing way. And I'm sure you all have stories of it, and I encourage you during the break to tell each other those stories. But for, the, for those of you who, who didn't know him, he was kind of, um, he, he was kind of an impish sage who had this inner sense of the truth, and I w was always kind of teasing you with it a little bit. So, so think of Jedi Master Yoda wearing horn-rimmed glasses. Um, he would always you know, challenge you and make you think about the world a little bit differently. And for his students, that, that and I guess he kind of treated us all as students. And he had an extraordinary intellectual generosity. And he made us all feel smarter. He made us all smarter and he taught us to think. So one of the things that would happen with him sometimes at a conference is you'd walk into um, a hotel or something like that and you'd hear a piano playing and it would sound like Mozart, a classical pianist playing Mozart or some classical piece and then you'd listen to it a little bit and you'd realize it was just Marvin improvising. And that was just kind of him thinking at the piano. So we're just going to have a minute of, of, of listening to Marvin, of just him, him improvising. And I encourage you during the break, after it's over, just to please tell each other Marvin's stories. I've, I've got lots of them I'm happy, I'm happy to tell you. But we're all going to miss him a lot. So if we can just have a minute of Marvin playing.